Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to lead us into the worship as we surrender to you our hearts and bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please open your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'll be reading from verse 17. I'll be using this morning an IV for smoother, smoother reading, since I'm not using the screen. So verse 17 says, Therefore, because of Jesus Christ, if anyone is in Christ, so therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Wow. So Jesus gives us a new creation. So if we are in Jesus, a new creation came to us. So we are reborn in Christ. Apostle Paul is saying here. Then the old has gone. The new is here. So old life, old character, old attitude, old of everything has gone. Because Jesus has given us something new. Verse 18. And this is from God. So it's from whom? It's from God. It's from the Father or this newness in Christ. It's from God. Who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So all these newness are from God through Christ because he reconciled himself to us through the person of Jesus Christ. In another way, word, he's saying, you are fallen human. You have rebelled against me. You have said no to my relationship. You have said, I want my wisdom, my pride, my everything. And you've gone on your way. But hold on, hold on. I'm giving you here Jesus Christ so you can be come back to be my friends and have eternal life in me. That's what Jesus is saying by, what the Bible is saying by giving us the reconciliation. It's as it counts to us as not happened at all. Isn't that amazing? All my before life has gone and Christ given me a new life, a new beginning in him. Does it stop here? No, it doesn't stop here. And we are as renewed in Jesus, as reconciled in Jesus, are given what? Say it out loud, please. We are given the message of reconciliation. So you and I are reconciled in Christ, all right? It's like never happened before. And now we are given this message to take it where? To the church where, we, where people are already reconciled? To the world, to the world, to the community, to the society, to take the message of reconciliation that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 19, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. So now this is the message of reconciliation. That God was reconcili reconciling everyone to himself through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus only. Nothing else but Christ. We are reconciled to the Father. Not counting people's sins against them. And we has or and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation so he repeats again in verse 19 that he committed he's given us this message to reconcile the world and one of the things it come to my mind always when i see wars fights death uh, all what's happening around us are those people reconciled are those people okay with God? Are they in a relationship with God? This is my message. And if somebody has to ask me, what do I do? I pray for people to be reconciled to the Lord because that's an amazing hope, amazing beginning, and the start for eternity. 
So he committed to us, those who are reconciled, all of us, this message of reconciliation. We are therefore, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. So we are Christian, given the message to take it away out to the world. When, when, when Farah and I uh, accepted the call to serve the church here earlier in April, later in May, I contacted Elder Lauren, and we came, we met, we met together, and he introduced me to the church building and to, to the church service a little bit, you know, and we spoke. And one of the things he told me, one of the things he told me, that our church service is translated. And I said, wow, that's really good. And he said to me, Brother Christopher translates our message every Sabbath. And I thought to myself, I must meet this brave man. I want to meet this man because I myself did the translation for over three years. Every Sabbath, I wasn't preaching, I translated the message. So I thought, I want to meet this brave man. So I met Brother uh, Christopher and introduced myself to him in the Father's room uh, uh, back here in the church. And I told him, Brother Christopher, if it makes it easier for you, I can print my script and give it to you ahead of time so you can look at it. And he said, I should be okay, Pastor. The Holy Spirit works. I mean, the Holy Spirit works. And Elder Christopher... Has not, doesn't have only the gift to, in speaking in tongues. His gift is not only to speak in tongues and translate the message. As I got to, to meet him and meet his amazing family visiting in, in his home, the Lord has blessed him with the gift of loving others. You know, his hospitality in their home, he and Regina and their family are amazing. You know, praise God for that. <laughs> You know, I like food. Don't let me talk of food, okay? All right. So, and he, he also volunteered a lot of his time to transport people back and forth to the church. He gives Bible studies, and he takes care of a lot of stuff as the Lord has called him to ministry. He is an amazing, you know, reconciled to the world through Jesus Christ. Brother Christopher, come forth, please. Let, let, let me introduce you to the Holy Church because I have speaking of you. Some know you, some don't. You know, you should have stood here, actually. Thank you. You know, you're so dear to my heart because of the, of the work the Lord has called you to do. And you have said yes. And so all the other elders of this church. I, um, I said I was blessed by having several elders here. We have amazing offset of nine active elders serving here in the church. And without their cooperation together, I couldn't make any of my ministry work in this way. So praise God. And today as we are making a very special ceremony to ordain Elder Christopher to the church and to the ministry, I would like to call all ordained elders, whether serving currently or have served in any church, to come forth to lay hand on Elder Christopher as we offer him ordination ceremony this morning. It's one of the main challenges in North America and in the world, in all religions and denominations. People are willing to volunteer and put their time and effort and ministry in religions and spirituality. And we encourage all of us as a Christians and being reconciled to the Lord to take such a footstep to work for the Lord and serve his people. Would you like to kneel down as we lay hands on you? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the call you have given to my brother Christopher and to all of us to serve you in our lifestyle. I want to thank you, Father, for the loving kindness you have given my brother Christopher so he can serve your people in our church, in our society, and in the community. 
And I want to ask you this morning to bless him and bless his family as he is sent to the ministry, as he recognized in our church to serve you, Father, and accept the reconciliation you have given him in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. God, lead him with your Holy Spirit wherever he goes. And when, when, once he doesn't have a word to say, speak it through him, Father. Use him, Lord. Let your word, your wisdom be talking and speaking and moving this gentleman, not himself, not his wisdom. Because we are all tools for your, for your glory, Father. Help us, God, and help my brother Christopher to love people as he would and to take care of your work as you send him out, Father. And help us, God, to be a good support for him and his ministry as needed. Thank you, Father, for the call you have given him. Thank you for his heart to accept your call and serve us and serve our church families in leadership. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Amen. Now, Elder Christopher will bless us with the word of God. Good morning, family church. I thank you as a family church for the things you have been done for me and my family. I thank you for the encouragement I've been receiving from elders and all the people whom we worship together. I really pleased of this church. I remember for the first time when Elder Rolin told me to become an elder, I thought in my personal view as a man who's not perfect, how can I be an elder? I was somehow slow to accept, but I remember that Moses also was a man of anger. I remember also before Isaiah to become a prophet, he, was, he said that my lip is not perfect, just God has to put a blaze on him so that he can clean him. So I told my Lord, Lord, I know I am weak, but in Jesus I am strong. I ask him to give me strength and to continue this journey to try to reach to the perfection for Jesus Christ. It is a controversial spiritual fight, but with faith, with trust in Jesus as the church, one day we have the victory. Today, I am in front of you to talk or to speak, but as a sinful man, man, let me please and ask the Holy Spirit to guide me in his word. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a simple man. Now I'm going to talk to people. Lord, I have nothing to give them, but you who have created them and brought them here as a family. Teach them and speak to them, and let me be your instrument to speak. I ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, as you see on the screen, uh, we were talking about the parable of the wheat and the tears, and the theme will be centered on this. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 28 to 30. And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather them up, the tears you should approach the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tears and bind them in bundles to bend them, but gather my wheat into my barn. Jesus is coming again. Which side will he be you on? On the side of the wheat or on the side of the tears? Before to go to the topic of this uh, sermon, 
Let us talk what was happening before Jesus to introduce the parables. Before Matthew, to present a series of parables from Matthew chapter 13 and on, in most following chapters, Jesus appeals to the leaders of the church, especially Pharisees and scribes, to accept him as their savior, the foretold Messiah by prophet such as Moses, Isaiah, and others. Today, I'm saying, I'm going to talk about the wheat and the tares. Why am I going to this back on the Pharisees and the, the scribe? Maybe it may be a concern for us as the church. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 17, through 18, I read, And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up from them a prophet like you, from among their brethren, and I, and I will put my words in his mouth, and shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which, he, which I speak, in my name, I will require of him. The book of Deuteronomy is a book of, um, which was preparing the people of Israel to go in the promised land. So it was like a review of what Moses has been teaching them and to prepare them to go ahead knowing what to do. There are, those people were about to meet people who did not know God. They have all, only the ab abomination of idol worship. So Moses started to prepare them so that they not uh, acquire or get the worship from other nations where they, are, they were going. And also it is a, a book of saying goodbye because Moses was not able to go with them as the Lord has told him he should die in the he should die, he should not go in, in, in Canaan. So he was preparing them to go over there as fitted. Uh, I will raise up from them a prophet like you, from among their, brave, their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. So, God will give Israel a prophet from their brethren. I am on Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. So this prophet that Moses, Moses was talking about, the prophet who, is, who will be replacing Moses is Jesus. This is the one who has been foretold by all, all, all prophets and was prophet the Pharisees, even the scribes, were learning about to him. This is the one who were trying to put in a trap or were trying to test Jesus. Why they say I bring a prophet from their brethren? Because the people of Israel were not able to stand at God's view, God's face. Uh, in this face, in this verse, Deuteronomy 18 to 18, we note humanity versus divinity. As sinful humans, the children of Israel, as it is the same for the whole human race, we cannot stand to the brightness of God and God as God is in his fullness of divinity. That is why God has chosen to bring Jesus in the form of humanity so that he can talk to us to to, to make God known. This is the same reason God has not chosen angels to bring the good news. God has chosen us as weak people with imperfection to take the word to our brethren. As we take the word to our brethren and our sisters, also are teaching ourselves or we are also bringing the good things to us. Remember that at the mountain of Sinai, 
Where Israel were receiving the Ten Commandments, they were afraid of God's voice, the fire and trembling at the mountain. In, that is in Exodus 20, 19, they say, And they said unto Moses, Speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. This is why God has to bring a prophet in a human body whom they had to obey fully in humanity and in divinity. Men should contemplate and listen to him. But do we do? Do we do? Do we listen to this prophet who is fully divine and fully human? It is for each of us to ask this question. Do we listen to this prophet? I continue with Deuteronomy verse 18, 18. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my ways in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Also, we note in the character of Jesus, simplicity and humanity. Jesus came in a simple way and a human form to save the perishing human race. Jesus has clothed his divinity in a human, in a human body like yours and mine, so that he can reach the degrading nature of men in order to lift us on a higher level, to reflect the character of God by accepting his sacrifice, which alone is able to bring back the likeness of God to us, as it was just before the creation of Adam and Eve. Jesus is the fullness of God and infallible to carry on the mission of God to save dying sinful men. So, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Behold, the vision shall be with a with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is, which is translated God with us. So Jesus is God who came to us to let, to let us know God, to let us know who is God. It is up to us to listen to him or not. Jesus is, a, is the presentation of God in his fullness hidden in humanity. He, he is the only one to carry, to carry on the mission, to make the Father known to men, women, children of Adam. He is able to bring this message without any mistake or without doing any wrong. We read at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. Having predestined to us to adoption as son by Jesus Christ, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. This means that it has been decided by God that through Jesus we become sons of God by his own will without constraint. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. And it shall, and, and shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which I speak in my name, I will require of him. So I was talking about the, the Pharisees and the scribes. These people were learning about the the. the the Messiah, or was learning about who was to come, but the one Moses has been talking about. But as I told you, in the preceding chapters of Matthew before chapter 13, Jesus was talking to them in a clear message, who he is, but they come to test him. And the, the Pharisees and the scribes are, were supposed to carry the word of people to, 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 his, to his people, but they start to 
inquire of him. They start to test him. But what will happen if they, the Pharisees who were supposed to bring the good news of Jesus start to test him? Those Pharisees, those scribes will be tested, will be at some time required of not listening to him. Today, we have been learning about the way of Jesus, we have been learning about his love, what he has done for us on the cross, and he has shown how we can love and bring the image of God or the knowledge of God to the perishing world. But if we don't listen today, also we'll be required of him at the end of time. At the end of time, or at the end of ages, through Jesus the Messiah, God the Father, will judge all of those who did not hearken his calling to receive his love of mercy for eternal salvation. Uh, the leaders of the church, especially Pharisees and scribes, reject Jesus appeal in clear, simple language. That is why, after they have rejected him to talk to him to clearly, so Jesus changed the way to teaching them. Even today, it is as for us. We have been receiving the good news in a clear and simple language. But sometimes, Jesus has to use symbolic language so that we can pay attention and know what he, he wants from us. For example, we have seen a lot of, we have heard a lot of songs which were talking about Jesus, about his sacrifice, about his love, and do see all of those people who have composed those songs, they used many different ways so that we can grasp, understand what the message he wants to bring us. Today, Jesus wants to talk us in the story of, in the parable of wheat and tears. Uh, the Pharisees, to test the prince of life and the Redeemer, they asked signs from Jesus. As a sign, Jesus gave them the preaching of Jonah at Nineveh and the conversion of the Queen of Sheba. But at the judgment, the people of Nineveh and the Queen of, of the South will rise and judge their generation because they have rejected the message the mercy of the Lamb of God. Then Jesus started to teach in parables. Today, Jesus is speaking to us. To us. He's speaking to each of us on which side we will be, wheat or tears. If you look at the picture, face the picture, we have a picture showing wheat and tears. Tears. Wheat and tears are two plants which resemble clothes, especially mainly when they spring out from the soil. On a close examination, a close observation requires a clear view to identify them. And sometimes it is hard to, uh, to identify them when they are growing. In a spiritual way, how does Jesus see us? How does Jesus view us? Are we with, are we tears, or as a human, can we able to discern who is with in the church or who is tear in the church? The answer I can say no, but only the Prince of Life knows who is with and tears. <laughs> Uh, let me move a little bit uh, on, uh, on the parable. We're going to start from Matthew chapter 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed the good seed in his, in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and the wheat went his way. But when the grain had sprouted 
and produce a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servant of the, the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not sow good seed in your field? How then does he have te tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The same thing said to, to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? God has loved this world and also has given us his word. But the enemy goes in another way and brings a, a rebellion in our hearts to oppose God. But God is so bearing his, for our imperfections, for our sin. He's waiting for us to repent, to, to turn on him. Uh, doing reference to white energy in, his, in her book, Christ's Object Lessons regarding the lesson about the tears from page 70 to 73, there are some concepts or lessons we could learn. First, in East Customs, any enemy could come and sow in your field body weeds, looking like wheat, in this case, tears. Wheat and tears are looking the same until the leaf blades are white or ripe to see them. But what can learn, but in their customers. Even God put in our, in our hearts good thoughts, love, doing well, but sometimes Satan came in our hearts and bring bad things, bad thoughts, and we have this spiritual war which led us to, to sin. So in the word of God, the sower is God himself via the teaching of, of the Christ. The enemy represents Satan who deceives Christians and the whole world. The field is the word or, or the field is the world or, or people. While wits and tears are two categories or groups of Christians in, in church. So wits are those who ha have Christ who, ha who have the character of Christ. Tears are those in the church who pretend to have the characters of Christ and have rejected his mercy. Do not confuse with tears, do not confuse tears with people whose faith is weak or have gone back to their previous life as they were before receiving Christ. Tears has rejected the mercy of the Lord. But even though it is so, God is still so bearing, is still patient. He's waiting his people to repent and to turn to him. Number. God is forbearance and tender love. He said to them, an, en an enemy has done this. The servants, the servants said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? Or do you want us to come and approve them? And the the Lord said, but he said, no, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. So here we see the impatient, there is a theme of impatient versus impatient. The, the servants are impatient to see wheat and tears to grow together. They are enthusiastic to uproot them out or weed out from the true wheat. But this is not true with the owner of the field because when weeding out the tears, there is much risk to uproot the wheat. Wait until the time of harvest where leaf bread, bread or grains are clearly white 
to distinguish between them. Lesson, or what we, 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 when can we learn? Christ forbear us to deal with his church. Often church members tend to push out brethren and st sisters whose behavior are judged by the church to deviate from the standard of the church. But Jesus say, wait for two reasons. Two reasons. Our judgment may not be true. Our action may make others to stumble or fall. Only Jesus knows who is the true wit. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. Only Jesus is the true. Only just judgment is true because he is the only one in a position to discern, to discern between wit and tears. Let us look at um, John 27, 10. Verse 27 to 28, I read, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. What can we learn from this verse from John 27 to 28? Each of us knows where he is or where she is. Are you able to hear the voice of our shepherd or not? But by faith, by trust, I know you know the voice of our shepherd because it is not by your own power or strength which brought you here in this church. It is the Spirit of God who has brought you. Even if we are struggling in our journey, in our Christian journey, but Jesus is forbearing for us and he's waiting us to change completely. And there is a good promise because Jesus says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never be perished, neither they shall Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. This is a promise, even though we have been called by the name of by Jesus and we are his people, even though we are struggling to reach to the point where we can reach the perfections, where we can, um, the perfection or where we can um, continue to, seal, to be like Jesus, Jesus knows that even if Satan is trying to take, our, to take us from, from, from our Lord, don't be discouraged because there is a promise, even if there is this struggle, this fight, this spiritual war, Jesus, we have a promise from our Lord. We are tempted, but we are not fallen completely. Satan will not take us from God's hands. He loves us and he's going to make that we will reach where we have to go. The reward from Jesus is, is very sure and we need to trust him. At the, at the harvest, what will happen? Uh, Matthew 13, 30 says, let both grow together until the harvest and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them and but gather the wheat into my barn. As the difference contrast is drawn between wheat and tares at the harvest, at the second coming of Jesus, characters will, will have been distinctive between God's people and those who will have rejected him. So, at the end of the time, there will not be one group or three groups, or there will be two groups. One group on the side of Jesus, another on the side of the perishing ones. So it is now we, when we need to prepare ourselves to develop the 
the character of Jesus, developing Jesus' character. At the harvest or at the second coming of Jesus, just after probation close, when all elect for God will have been sealed, each human case would have been decided for eternal life or for eternal death. In his early things, page 36, Ellen G. White stated regarding the sinning of God's chosen people. I read, I saw that the four angels would hold the four wings until Jesus' work was done in the sanctuary, and then he will come, and then will come the seventh plague, last plague. This plague enraged the weak against the righteous. They thought that we had brought the judgment of God upon them. And that if they could read the earth of us, the plague would then be stayed. A decree went forth to slay. I mean, I stop from here. A decree went in sense to, to kill the people of God. But I want to insist on, on these words. I saw the four angels would hold the, the four wings until Jesus' work was done in the sanctuary. Which kind of wings the angels are holding? The angels are holding was a plague so that the people of God can be prepared for the second, for the second coming for Jesus. Until Jesus' work was done in the sanctuary, there is two works that should be done before Jesus is coming. First, Jesus is still interceding before the Father for all saints who have manifested their love and faith in Jesus. Second, sealing the saints up by the seal of God. If it is time to seal the people of God, it is now. It is my time, it is your time to do personal introspection, to see where I am or you are in your journey with God. Am I ready? Are you ready? How can I do personal introspections? John 15, verse 12 to 15, give us some cues. How can we know to do our personal exam ex examination or which, which level of measure can we measure ourselves to see where we are with God? Just said in John 12, 15, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his, his friend. You are my friend if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servants does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I had from my father I have made known to you. So the only way to measure ourselves is to see if the Christian need to profess our brief we profess, is it practical? Do we put in practice what we do? This week we have learned in Bible study, we have learned how we can manifest the love for others and the love for God. The only way is to bring what you believe in practice. Uh, so Jesus loves us so great. He has given his life, as he says, he has laid down his life for his friend, while his friend. So this sacrifice I am, we are talking about, every day, every morning, every time we come here, we are talking about the sacrifice of God, because it is, this is the one who can solve the problem of humanity. 
humanity is dying because we have rejected Jesus. And the Christians who are somehow sleeping, we are busy with our daily life, but we don't put forth for the weight of God. It is, it, is now, it is now time to change our, what we are doing so that we can improve how we can make the word of God go forward. So Jesus loves us because we are not servants. We are his friends. We are, we are his brethren. We are his, his sisters. Why? Because Jesus is the manifestation of God. Jesus has shown us God, as he said, I have called you friends for all things I heard from my father, I have made known to, to you. Now we know the father, we know Jesus, as we know Jesus, we know the father. The father is love, and Jesus is love, and he is caring. So Jesus wants us to care our brethren, our sisters, our, our neighbors, as we have seen in the lesson in, in, his, in his, during this week. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is everybody who is in a problem, in a difficult. We have to support them to come out, showing them the love of God through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is coming again. Which side will be you on? A call for worship. It is the motive it is the motive or the reason which gives character. I repeat this. It is the motive or the reason which gives, give, which gives character. Wherever we do, do it, we do from our bottom of our heart, or we have some intention which are pushing us to do what we are doing. So Jesus wants us to have a real motive or a real reason but we are professing our faith while showing our love to others. Our love should come from the Lord, from the Jesus, because we alone cannot love, but God will give us the, the true love so that we have, have a true character, a true motive to do what we are doing. All of those who act faithfully to save the Lord Jesus will be on which side. Today, church, family, we were called to have a practical Christian life as we prepare to mold, to form, to change our bad characters to the likeness of Jesus because we are no longer the servants but Jesus' friends. He has shown us the Father through his love and his act to live and to, to relieve and to save those who, who are op oppressed by Satan. We are not here to sleep. We are here to relieve or to reduce the, suf the sufferance or the pain of people who are suffering. We are here on a mission. The mission of God is my mission, is your mission. Let us continue to do the mission of God until he comes and he will see us who are worthy for him. Wheat or tears, look on these pictures. We have the picture of Jesus. I, Jesus, sorry. I don't know how to do it. We, as advanced, we should not use images, but sometimes we can use as education. Nothing myself I can do to change myself. I think somewhere in the Bible, I don't remember exactly, where they say an Ethiopian cannot do anything to change her skin. Even myself, I cannot change to be a good person. What I do, I have to soften, to soften my heart and to let Jesus change, change my heart. This is what the Pharisees should have been done. That's why when I start, to, I start with about the preaching of Jesus, uh, with Pharisees and scribes. The Pharisees were not open, they did not have, have open heart. If they should, should have open heart, they should have listened to the Messiah and received him. So, 
Jesus later for our saving the hands of Jesus by faith. He's going to change us. Don't have fear. Even if we, have, we are struggling, but one day, Jesus is, has opened hands. He's receiving us. Let us be ready to work with him. And all of this turns on, on one thing. It turns on the sacrifice. The sacrifice which has been done before the foundation of the world. Before the creation of a human, God knew that we were going to sin. God knew that Adam and Eve will go against his law and bring sin and death to humanity. As one person brought death, only another person brought life, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the lamb saying from the foundation of the world, a victory is sure. Let us prepare for his second coming of Jesus. When he comes, where will he be? On wheat or tear side? To prepare is now. Thank you. Let me pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I thank you for this moment. I hope you have talked to the people, but nothing can you do soft, to, soften, to soften our heart, to prepare our heart to receive to you. Let not be like Pharisees and harden our heart. Open our heart to listen to your voice and to follow you because you are the true shepherd. I ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.